I'm Lynn manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. I'm Keith Chow. I'm Brittany Monet. I'm Dominic Ma. How you guys doing? Hi, friends. I'm good. So much stuff is happening. Jesus Christ. Well, yes. it's September 11th for one thing. <laughs> There's also and that. And football season has started. It's it's in some ways the least nerdy day possible. It's like this is like the most normy, non-nerdy day. And yet... <laughs> well, not just that. The Elizabethan age just ended. There's that as well. Elizabethan age ended. So anyway, yeah. that's not what we care about here at the Nerds of Color. <laughs> the big news that we got to cover is the other... It's the other palace on on, on this side of the Atlantic. It's the Disney Castle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just hosted their uh, annual D23 Expo. So I am not quite a Disney file. I don't understand what D23 means. Does... Does anyone know the origin of that particular I name? I don't. I'm sorry. Like, I like Disney, but I'm one of those people who don't know all the little ins and outs like that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is D23? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything Disney? I'm sure people in the comments can tell us. What was Eminem's rap crew called? <laughs> D12? Okay, yeah. So it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. And I'm pretty sure Marshall Mathers has nothing to do with the Mouse House. Uh, yeah, I have no idea, except that it is catchy and kind of SEO and you know probably refers to like walt's favorite number or something or actually when (laughs) they're fans of michael jordan i think is what ultimately when my friends made a joke that it refers to the 23 companies that they own that produce all content (laughs) and it might really be up to 23 by this point at this point what's also interesting is that we always talk about how the timing always works out that disney and marvel to a certain extent always basically eat warner brothers and dc's lunch it happens at Comic Con every year. It happens when Warner Brothers announces their two iconic superheroes are going to have a movie where they fight, and then Marvel says, "Oh yeah, we're going to do that too, mm-hmm. and do it better." DC announces a whole multiverse in which their lead character is going to open up the multiverse of all the cinematic history of the DC heroes, and Marvel says, "Yeah, we're going to do that too, and then do it first and do it better." Mm-hmm. This week was the big Black Adam trailer announcement <laughs> on the heels of. Warner Brothers announcing they're canceling DC Fandom, which would have been their own version of D23, right? Oh, no Fandom? No Fandom okay. this year. It's uh, it's 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 getting written off for taxes, I guess. Oh, sure. Well, they only <laughs> no, had like one, that's not right? right? It's that. Twice. It's twice. They did it twice. Okay. okay. Two years in a row. Fine. So no Fandom, no, no. And it's not like they had anything to announce, right? Like, <laughs> they were going to have a Fandom to announce all the shit we're canceling. We're that would have been great. <laughs> I, that's what I kind of we're was We're still thinking about releasing this Flash movie. <laughs> that's where <laughs> so, it's possible. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about the Black Adam trailer, maybe not. But, like, that was the big DC thing earlier in the week. The Black Adam trailer. Mm-hmm. And then D23. And it's like, oh, yeah? How about this trailer and that trailer and Werewolf by Night for some reason? So Actually, that looks really dope. <laughs> I'm just saying, but like, who asked for it? Anyway, we'll, we'll I, get there. I didn't, but now I want it. <laughs> and that's good. Anyway. I, I think that very much falls in line with what you say about Disney um, eating other people's lunch and sort of trolling. We use the word trolling too much. It's like, it, it, what do you call in geopolitics? It's, it's like a provocation to... Mm. Freaking wasn't Paramount supposed to have the monster universe? Well, they well apparently speaking of Paramount, like Disney just kind of like stepped all over their Star Trek day too, right? Yeah, just kind of stepped over the Star Trek day. <laughs> and they took Matt Shankman, who was supposed to be doing Star Trek, and he's doing now Fantastic Four instead. Is that mm-hmm. right? See, poaching. Yeah, yeah. Yep. that's what that's all they do. And so I thought that Werewolf by Night thing, which is sort of a surprise, was kind of like saying, "Oh yeah, we can do a monsterverse too, no problem," because all those monsters are in Marvel <laughs> canon also. Yes. Right. And they're all essentially public domain. Yeah. I don't know if I'm alone in this, but the Werewolf by Night was the most exciting trailer I saw from all of the, the Marvel <laughs> footage. So, like I said, it's not something I asked for, but that's now the thing that I want to see the most out of everything that they're <laughs> releasing. With at least the, those trailers, like that, to me, I was like, oh, this just, this looks amazing. This looks cool. Yeah, it was cool because it had a cool vibe, like old school horror movie, mm-hmm. kind of a kind of a different style, and we like to we like to latch onto stuff like that. Well, I guess let's start with Werewolf by Night then, because again, I'm not 
I'm not well versed on obscure Marvel characters, particularly in the I'm not either. Werewolf by Night, Blade, Morbius. Like I feel like they all kind of exist in the same milieu in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So Dominic, yes. I will turn to you. Who the fuck is Werewolf by Night? I don't remember really well, but I remember that was that was the name of a comic when they had a mini monster verse part of Marvel Comics, probably in the late seventies. You know, they had their version of Frankenstein too and some other things. Not to be okay, Werewolf by Night is not to be confused with Man Wolf, who is the guy that J. Jonah Jameson's son turns into right. the moon, right? Mm-hmm. Different person. And I bet Werewolf by Night like gets pulled into the Midnight Suns area of things mm-hmm. at some point in the modern version. But I think mainly what, as far as I know, what you're saying is true. It's a public domain monster and it has, you know, some Marvel connections that are just like, we'll make that one. And it'll be a surprise. <laughs> and on Halloween. Yeah, and I almost wonder, because of like it's so fanciful, right? It's like you said, it's this old school Hammer movie kind of like universal monster movie Mm -hmm. it's black and white it's like it looks like a period piece but it's also marvel studios production it's not one of those like you know side projects Mm -hmm. it's fully fully entrenched in the mcu so i wonder if it's like kind of like a movie within a movie kind of thing like maybe the werewolf by night special presentation right they're not even calling it a movie or a show Mm -hmm. it's a special presentation maybe it's a movie that exists in the mcu that like will play in the background in a future movie, but they're just releasing it as a... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's almost sure. as if they released Maybe. Rogers the Musical as an actual musical, right? The, the, the kind of, like, world within a world. I don't know. I mean, because on the surface, it doesn't look like it would fit anywhere within what we know of the Marvel right. universe. I think that's what right? I like about it, maybe, that it looks the most different and creative, something that they've done in I don't know how long. It just really stood out to me, and I think it like you said it picks up on the old like you know scary movies and stuff so it's just i don't know it's vibing with me i'm really like i'm just (laughs) i'm down for that like i didn't think that was gonna be the most exciting project i thought we would get some daredevil footage or i don't know something else that would like they haven't even started shooting apparently that was the yeah the the big news out of d23 marvels like i thought we would get the marvels footage i've heard the people in the room said that was actually the best footage that they saw Mm -hmm. in there that was the best thing but like, for me, I didn't think that, you know, Wolf <laughs> wolf by Night was going to be something that I'm like, yeah, actually, this is really what I want to see. Who cares about the other stuff? Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> that's kind of what I was saying is like, like, they've never, did they ever announce that they were doing something like Werewolf by Night, right? Because like, when mm. they were plotting out phases five, four and five and six, there was never like, and Werewolf by Night, right? It was just kind of like came out of nowhere, which is kind of cool too, right? Mm-hmm. It was showing that Marvel can still surprise. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're so used to like, it's cool. <laughs> It's cool that there's something that wasn't announced six right. months ago that we can talk about for six months. This one is like, okay, it's just going to come out. We can talk about it for... Right, like, it's coming out next month, month right, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with your meta movie theory. I, I, it makes sense. Maybe it's just something that, like, Ant-Man and his daughter are watching in the theater no. on Halloween night or something. I hope not. <laughs> you, you, want it to, you want it to be, like, real? Yes, I mean, real. it looks so cool. I don't know. Like, Mahersha Ali shows up at the very end yeah, and, like, like kills I, Gail Grisso I'm fine with that. I don't know. Um, as long as it's done well. It looks it just looks like the most, like, cool, like I said, the most cool different thing they've done in a good minute. So it just looks really yeah. fun, and I'm just, I'm on board, so. Well, so let's take a step back, because Werewolf by Night was not the only thing that was announced during D23. It wasn't the only footage that was released on the internet to britney's point some things were held close to the vest some things were still behind closed doors Mm -hmm. only for the people in the room other things were released on youtube minutes after it was announced on stage it's it's very much like the comic-con vibe friday and saturday the first two days of d23 were wide open they live streamed like the video game presentation they live streamed the animation presentations but they they held the star wars and marvel ones Mm mm-hmm privately mm-hmm. just looking back at the weekend what other than werewolf by night because we've just talked about it what was the thing that stood out the most across all of the presentations this includes not just marvel but the lucasfilm presentations and the live action disney presentations and the animation and pixar presentations so i never saw the movie but willow the series that looks really fun and i think that's also like the next thing i'm most excited about and then Everything that was, like, sh- like, strictly Star Wars that I saw, I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. So, I'm very much on board. Tales of the Jedi and Mandalorian were the only trailers we got. Oh, I and guess we got we, a new Andor and the, trailer. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm just on board with 
Star Wars based. I think everything Lucasfilm pretty much released that I saw, I'm like, I'm on board with it. Yeah, I don't know. Secret Invasion looks fun, and I don't remember what other trailer they released for Marvel, unless that was the only trailer besides... Uh, we got Marvel was Secret Invasion, Werewolf by Night, and I feel like there was one other. If there was one other, it just didn't hit for me. Maybe there wasn't any other footage okay. from Marvel. Well, I mean, there were things that were shown in the room. and Right, I mean, that was released which, to the plebeians and, like us. Yeah, showed up on YouTube, <laughs> I think. Secret we were not invasion. in the room where it happens. We're in the world. We were not in the room where it happens. Yes. And... Lin-Manuel Miranda was in the room. Where, well, no, he wasn't in the room where it happens either, was but he? Anthony Ramos was. Anthony Ramos showed up. He he was confirmed for Ironheart. So listeners, we're just gonna go all over the yeah, place. There's kind no, of a like... freeform like discussion or a <laughs> bunch of trailers that came out. Well, I was and... gonna go out of Marvel and go to the live action Little Mermaid because that was a trailer oh, yes, that was that, released. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, Lynn so... is doing the music with Alan Menken for mm-hmm. that. Lynn Manuel Miranda is working on with Alan Little Menken Mermaid? on Little, yeah, Little Mermaid. Yeah, they're doing a couple original well, songs. Well, that's superstar. Because he got Davy Diggs, I think, is Sebastian. Sebastian? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so a little Hamilton reunion for Little Mermaid. But yeah, wait, let's talk about this one because this is just like a, you know, a rich topic. What the first teaser for the live action Little Mermaid came out. You all have thoughts? I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the original. Just I, I know I, I knew Britney was going to be mad. Of course, it's a classic. I love the songs, right? Poor unfortunate souls, part of your world. I love the music. I'm not a fan of the like film itself. Like I, I don't love, love the movie. <gasps> I mean, I think it partly is just, like, the story is just kind of, you know. Like, I kind of, I feel for Ursula. Like, what's, <laughs> she signed a bad contract. It's it's Ariel's fault. It's not, like, I mean, Urs- you Ursula have didn't have to point. die. <laughs> you have a point, but I still love that movie. I don't know. And Prince, then, you know, like, like, the whole, the whole thing about, you know, what's his name, Eric? He, he needs a girl to, can't speak for herself. I mean, I don't, that's some, sh- that's a shady prince is all I'm saying. Look, the original story is actually the original Little Mermaid book is actually really fucked up and kind of sad. And but in general, fairy tales are always more. It's a lot worse than what like you know the Disney. Yeah, Ariel does not get uh, the Little Mermaid in that version does not get her prince, and she ends up dying and turning into sea foam. So I don't know how family happy whatever that (laughs) would be, but I know Hans Christian apparently was in love with the ballet dancer and she gave up. Be- a ballet for some other dude that she ended up with it and she wasn't really happy with the rest of her life and he wrote that story in dedication to her that she lost herself trying to please this dude or whatever i will say that i'm not super stoked that melissa mccarthy is ursula that's kind of like the one That's casting like, I, I in that like, movie that I don't i'm know. not i feel like it's the obvious for. That's the obvious casting choice for an, or like when you hear there's a, like most people say, oh, what about Melissa McCarthy? Because I think the problem is like when you only have two or three well-known, you know, overweight actors and you have an overweight villain, they're going to only say the only two or three actors that they know. Why? You think it's too much of a gimme, Keith? What? Like, or do you not care for Melissa McCarthy? Is When I said I'm not a huge fan of the original movie, it doesn't mean like I don't have any reverence for like the characters. Like I said Ursula is an iconic character. Yeah. Okay. And I think she's also an iconic, like, especially in, like, the queer community. So I think there was some, you know, having, like, an actress like Melissa McCarthy. Like, to your point, they just found some plus-size actress. But they could have gone someone a little bit more flamboyant. a little Because, like, Melissa McCarthy is a very specific kind of comedy Mm -hmm. that's not, like, my cup of tea necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yes, and I know that Ursula was designed after Divine. Divine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the only other thing I'll say about Little Mermaid is that we only got a tease for the footage that was released publicly but apparently for the folks in the room they actually got the whole part of your world sequence oh so that's i want to i want to see i wish i saw that because like the little taste we got was really interesting i can't believe that that's like the selling point of the whole movie well that's why they only gave it to like the thousand people in the room (laughs) instead of the millions of people watching on youtube so I have loved black Twitters. What are we wearing to the Little Mermaid tweets? Those have been really fun. <laughs> if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend looking those up. Yeah, it's, it's, I yeah. like that people post it like really ridiculous, like Party City version costumes of like the Little Mermaid or King Triton, and it's just really funny. So I would highly recommend finding those tweets. Okay, what are you wearing? <laughs> Do you want to discuss that? Or to... I, don't, I don't know. I need to look at what Party City. You're has going software. though, right? You're oh. going opening night. Oh, I am so going opening night. It's the day <laughs> after my birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Here's the Little Mermaid. Yeah, my birthday's May 25th. It comes out May 26th. Like you know, it's just 
meant to be. Are you worried about the new songs? I mean, it's it's one thing Lynn's doing it, but anytime you add new songs to like an iconic score like Little Mermaid. Well, I know they did for the stage musical. They added in a couple songs that aren't in the movie just because like Eric doesn't have a song, but he does in the musical, which when they did a, a few years ago at the Hollywood Bowl, they did like a live like you know, where they have the movie playing and they have the orchestra and they have a couple of singers come out and sing different songs. They had Darren Chris sing the song from the musical, which is... Do you know who, who is the prince in the in this movie? Do you know? I, it's not Harry I Styles because he was up for the role, but he didn't get it. Thank God. Sorry. Nothing. Well, nothing. Mean we don't want Harry's. him spitting on uh, Ariel. So that's... I, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I can't remember the name of the the dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall who's playing. But I know that... You know, all the Ariel sisters are all, like, diverse and different people or different women of different races are playing. Well, but speaking of giving characters songs who didn't have songs in the original, the other trailer that I I was really interested in, primarily because it was was a favorite in our household when when it first came out, was Disenchanted. Oh, yes, that looks a lot of fun. And it seems like, you know, in the in the sequel... They're actually going to give Idina Menzel a song because she didn't sing at to. all in the first movie. Well, no, but she was in the first movie and she has no, because she's just the bad guy and she doesn't sing. And it's like, yeah. how do you cast Idina Menzel like at the height of her wicked popularity uh-huh. and not give her a song? So I think they've corrected that mistake in the sequel because it looks like there's a, a number for, for Idina. So yeah, and that, I, that I just think cool. now that she's more known because of Frozen. <laughs> you have to so now it's like a you have to we have to we messed up the last time and we gave her a song so now it's like we got to well it's kind of like in frozen 2 because frozen 1 they didn't give jonathan groff a song he only had like the reindeer talk to people song which is like 30 seconds and then and then frozen 2 they were <laughs> we've totally lost dominic i'm <laughs> no i'm with you, I'm with this you. Conversation. I'm with you. I, I, I don't know anything about disenchanted but i'm with you <laughs> What I've appreciated the most about Frozen 2 is like, well, let's give Groff a whole song. And it's the best song in, in the sequel. Anyway. Oh, also, did they not... I don't know if they announced or they just talked about the sequel to Lion King. Oh, it's a prequel. A prequel. Apparently. Wait, Barry that, Jenkins oh, directed oh, live action. Oh, real? I thought that was a joke. No. <laughs> right, because it seems so good. It should be a joke. But Barry Jenkins directing a Lion King movie. But it's the live action lion king yeah or the photo real lion king yeah so didn't they just already do that with Barry? well no it's right. it's, so Muf- first... it's called mufasa the lion king so it's the origin story of mufasa right so i think this is them like their first sequel to their live action remakes <laughs> or anyway well, it's, no. it's, or i don't know if it's uh, Mal- maleficent had a sequel Yes. Yeah, and I think one other yeah, film that is has technically one of their live action remakes too. I just yeah. meant I it would be like if they did like Dumbo two or something. But my point <laughs> is, it's very exciting that Barry Jenkins is directing it. Got a great visionary black filmmaker who did Moonlight and Medicine for Melancholy, and like he's one of those guys like you thought like would be able to stay out of this, <laughs> you know, big studio like event movie circle for a while but they got him apparently to do something which is uh, he's probably greatly suited for we'll see again it's it's one of the things like who asked for the mufasa movie everyone hated the lion king so yeah i bet it still made a zillion dollars well everything makes a zillion dollars but like especially recently i guess folks who had missed it in the theaters or people are just rediscovering it i know it kind of like went viral again recently on twitter because people were like comparing the will to be seen from the live action to the will to be seen in the cartoon Mm -hmm. and like the expressiveness of the cartoon and then you know part of me is like well but the whole like exercise of john favreau's lion king was it like tell the same story but with like real animals Mm -hmm. and you're not going to get the same expressiveness from like a real lion cub than you would and i guess but that begs the question like then why even do it but Mm -hmm. i mean it is interesting that yes barry jenkins of all people is doing Mufasa so I'm, I'm I'm curious to see like how he brings his sensibility to, to that movie but it's yeah. also apparently going to feature Timon and Pumbaa again like Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner's versions oh, okay okay so I mean they're kind of doing the remember like this is I think especially for like Britney's generation Lion King one and a half oh yeah I where it was movie. like retelling the first story but then through the eyes of Timon and Pumbaa they're mm-hmm. kind of like doing that in a way because that's what I heard from the, the reporting inside the room is that it's going to be like Mufasa's origin story, but it's also going to be like Timon and Pumbaa. So, mm, okay. 
Who knows? Who knows? I mean, um, Hocus Pocus 2 looks fun. <laughs> there's also Hocus Pocus 2. Another long-awaited sequel. Sequel 30 years after the original. Uh, finally. I, I mean, Hocus Top Pocus. Gun Maverick proved that you can wait 30 years and make a dope-ass sequel, so. Yes, which I never saw the first one. Not gonna But lie. you saw Maverick? Yes. I don't like Tom Cruise, but my family forced me to go with them to go see that. Did you like it? I did. I, I don't like Tom Cruise, but... Like, I don't consider myself a Tom Cruise fan either, but then, like... I was watching Maverick and just like pumping my fists every scene. But so, like... they are bringing back my favorite Tom Cruise character for a movie. They are doing a Les Grossman movie of his character from Tropic Thunder. That is my most favorite. <laughs> They're just bringing him back, the, the yes. agent. That is my most favorite Tom Cruise character. That is like when I love him the most. So I'm very excited yeah, for that. Yeah, like... would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, and not to go on this Tom Cruise tangent when we're trying to talk about <laughs> D23, but did you see the footage that Paramount released of the Mission Impossible intro that he did for CinemaCon a couple months ago? Mm-mm. So basically, there's like a biplane flying over the mountains of South Africa. Oh, it's like one of those like old school like yeah. Red Baron planes. Mm-hmm. And my man is just standing on top of it. It's crazy. And then like Chris McCory, the director, flies next to him. And he's like, Tom, we're losing the light. We need to go. And then he's like, I gotta go, guys. And then the plane dives with him <laughs> standing on top of it. Because he's crazy. He, I, I'm yeah. like, you're I'm 65 sorry. years old and you're going to die. Wish. <laughs> and people say that no one does practical effects anymore. <laughs> I want, here's what I want. I want a Tom Cruise, Jackie Chan movie. I want the two of them doing a movie together. Like going, oh. are, are there like enemies? Until, I don't know, but just I mean, until like I mean, one be, of them breaks something. Epic. <laughs> on set anyway that so there's that's the tom cruise tangent let's get back to d23 i know dominic you were covering the video game portion of d23 was there anything interesting coming out of that side of oh yeah the disney house well i was kind of gonna do that for my nerd popping but oh few, sorry cause it's sort of well because you guys went off in musicals i i could go off on video games for a while but i think you, you may or may not be interested okay i'll tease it there was a bunch of stuff, and the biggest reveal was that they announced a Black Panther and Captain America team-up game set in World War II. Oh. There was a lot of rumors about uh, what this would be. It has, you know, very voicing, esteemed talent involved. Who's voicing? Uh... So, oh, no, they, 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 they announced nothing. We know nothing about it. It doesn't even have a title. Oh. We have no yeah. idea what's going on. <laughs> the main thing is that it has these, uh, you know, very esteemed... Uh, you know, video game creator talent working on it. So they know it's going to be like a big AAA console game. And people thought it would be like X-Men or Fantastic Four or something. But instead, it's this period piece that just boils down on these two Avengers. That sounds cool. And, and that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Maybe we'll revisit. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll tease that for later. So stay tuned to the end of the podcast to hear more about the Captain America Black Panther game. Well, but there were other announcements. Were, were, were they like paled in comparison to the to that one? They they announced freaking two Avatar games. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. It was like I, I was I was expecting them to preview something about the upcoming Spider Man games or the Wolverine games, which are a big deal. Um, but they didn't because those are probably more in the Sony house. Hmm. So they're they're waiting to do that. And yeah, sorry, uh, no shade to Midnight Suns people, but. Oh yeah, that was announced. There is this Midnight Suns game coming out, but I I would say buzz around it is not very buzzy. Except it, I'm not into turn-based combat myself. But maybe its its main draw is that you can play as some interesting characters like Nico Minoru or Magic. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. And is that trying to like capitalize on the Marvels kind of centering the Midnight Suns characters like Blade, like? Yeah, potentially it's got a Ghost Blade, Rider, and it's got and it's got Ghost Rider. Yeah, it's in the Which magic of Ghost magic Rider? darkness area of things. Blaze, and or... I don't really know which Ghost Rider it is. I, it might be in public information, or it might not. Again, I just know a little bit about that Midnight Sun game. Sun's game. We need Robbie Reyes. Ghost yes, Rider we do. In the MCU, bring him back. Who we well we got Donnie Blaze, but I don't know <laughs> yeah, we'll get Donnie Blaze. That... <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll definitely get to that. Uh, wait, so what, what else? There, so there are a bunch of announcements. So there was I'm... Secret Invasion. Yeah, the trailer looks great. The trailer looks good. You know, I was thinking, what what would that show be about? 
And it does seem like the scrolls are not as friendly as well, we've been led to believe. A sec, a, a, a faction a of faction them. A faction right? of them. That's what people have to remember. It's a faction. But of even them. Talos doesn't seem so trustworthy in the trailer. No, because that person he's beating up is a bad guy. Oh, is that right? I'm pretty sure Malcolm X. Um, I that's the that's he played. I don't remember his actual real oh. name. <laughs> like, wait, Talos is beating up Malcolm <laughs> sure. X. That doesn't sound like a good thing. That's just your shorthand for the actor, and you're saying that's right. my shorthand yeah, so let's go for the, the actor from, uh, which, from which the uh, One Night in Miami. A big right? deal. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the guy who played Malcolm X One Night in Miami. That I'm sorry, like I'm until I know his actual name, he's just always going to be Malcolm X. I'm pretty sure he's a scroll, and Talos or Ben Middleton was beating him up in the trailer. So I think he's a scroll and he's bad. So I was a big fan of that Secret Invasion comic book series. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. stories. I'm not like hugely into Bendis either, but I think that's his best work. Mm. And, uh, you know, part of the tradition of uh, the Marvel's secret events, Secret Wars, Secret Invasion, Secret Empire at all. But so it's interesting. So it looks like this one is focusing on Nick Fury and some amount of Rhodey. In a kind of undercover spy yeah, drama, right? Yeah, it seems more like a spy thriller type of thing. So they must be infiltrating something that is replaced S.H.I.E.L.D. or something like that is what I'm getting. Yeah. And I remember that the girl who played Gemma on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was seen around set. Oh, do you think she'll so show she up? So she could be showing up, but I just also found out today that she is a director now. So she could have just been there because oh. she was directing an episode and not in it. So. Yeah. Like, but she was around, you know, and obviously there's still rumors that we're going to see Daisy Johnson return, especially it feels even more heightened because obviously her and us, uh, Simu took a picture together. So there's, yeah, there's just like a lot of like, was Agent Shield involved or not? I don't know. Well, and then the one thing that I took away from that trailer is that it seems like, and this was rumored for, for a while now, mm-hmm. that the Nick Fury that we're seeing in Secret Invasion is the real Nick Fury, number one, because as mm-hmm. you remember in Spider-Man, he was a scroll. He was yeah. he was Ben Mendelsohn, right? Yes, it's Talos. Ultimately. Yes. But the other thing that it implies, at least, that Maria Hill implies, and I think the trailer itself implies, is that the, the real Nick Fury, the Nick Fury we met in Iron Man, has been away for mm-hmm. much longer than we were led to believe. That it wasn't just far from home where he was replaced by a scroll. That he might have been on this secret mission in space mm. for years. Yeah. Probably and so like the, since, uh, maybe since Ultron, I think that that's the, yeah. the timing perhaps. So like all of the appearances that Nick Fury's had in the previous years has not been Nick Fury. It's been the Talos version. Except for what do you call it? Captain Marvel. Right, well, Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel which, took which, place which, 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 yeah, yeah, right. Which is sets up the relationship with the scrolls. So like, that's interesting to me to, to kind of find out like how long has Nick Fury been away and it would maybe explain why Nick Fury wasn't involved in the Endgame battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he and that's the cool, the cool conceit of Secret Invasion, the story. But he also you know, got for dusted. Non-comics though. readers, there were yeah, bore. Whoa, okay, damn it, the dusting. Wait, <laughs> but so it was, was the, it? But, 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 but I guess they're trying Super. to say that. But that was the Talos version. Of so then Nick Talos Fury that got had his pager. To the, yeah. So then Talos had the pager to call. Captain Marvel. Well, because it seemed like Talos and Fury had a you know an alliance. Like it, it wasn't like Talos was just being Fury without Fury's knowledge. Maybe Fury's like, I gotta go on this space mission. Mm-hmm. You need to be me on Earth. So here's everything you need to know about me. Mm. Who knows? I mean, like 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 I said, I I was I could be completely wrong because I I totally misinterpreted Talos in the trailer because I was like, ooh, is Talos a bad guy actually? But to your point, he's beating up a bad guy. So well, no, also scrolls can imitate other scrolls. Okay, I mean, I think this is gonna be. <laughs> That the big, you know, gimmick of the series is probably people imitating each other out the wazoo. Ooh. And again, the background is that there have been deep cover scroll agents imitating people for years or months or ever very long, and you have to like do the track back to figure out when they first got replaced. And then there, and then you know, also there's this thing of with you know, not every scroll has the same like life view like there mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. there's one faction that in the comics it becomes like sort of hyper religious and they fanatically attack earth but there's still some other scrolls who like the ones you met in captain marvel who might be coming from a different place so the good scrolls is not a conceit of the mcu solely like that there's precedent for that in the comics that i don't remember but it seems likely but it's not it's not very much in secret invasion the comic in secret invasion are pretty much monolithically Bad. Right, 
bad. Because the whole conceit of that comic is that, like, all of these heroes you thought were heroes were secretly right. bad guys all along. Okay. Right. But they're always, I mean, there are always a few. News. There's something like, uh, what is it? Well, they're, it's like the schools are going through a phase because they've all, they become fanatical about the their leader, queen, in this religious way, sort of like the Silence of Bellstar yeah. Galactica. But then there's other things like, like Hulkling's, like, half scroll, and, you know, he represents another faction. Anyway, I don't want to get too lost in the weeds <laughs> but the point is you can't trust anyone yeah <laughs> and that, that's the point of secret secret invasion well i mean so yeah and that was the only real footage that we got for for the again no shade the werewolf by night but like the the stuff that we've known about going into phase five and six yeah. but there were some things that weren't footage that we got we got the final lineup for the thunderbolts has nothing to do with emil blonsky so i'm like yeah, doubly wrong <laughs> or they just haven't or they haven't said who that villain is that they're fighting and you all, you think that maybe they're going to take down the the abomination goes savage at the end of She Hulk maybe. and they got to go get him. I I just feel like that lineup <laughs> is like a little too white, first of all, and and they're miss. I like where's Zemo? Like how do you do a Thunderbolts unless, movie and no Zemo? He's the maybe, villain too. I don't know. But isn't Zemo like? But Zemo's iconically like the leader of the Thunderbolts, right? Like yeah, I think they stopped caring about that completely because <laughs> unless no they're switching one stuff up, reads the Thunderbolts. Yeah, okay, let's be serious. But I just feel like they have like six characters who all do the same thing, and then there's Ghost who has a different, cool, useful power. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, they really why do the is same Bucky thing. in the Thunderbolts? Do we like, need Winter why? Soldier in there? Yeah, not, yeah. I mean, not Winter Soldier. Do we need USA Agent? No. Oh, not right. Really? Like, US, so you got Bucky, US Agent, and Yelena. Like, and I Red love Guardian. Florence Pugh and Red Guardian. Like, you have two Captain America types. Three. All of them. Bucky's a Captain America type. Are like the same type of character in a way in times of what they do, and then you have Ghost who actually has different cool powers. So I just feel like. It is weird. It's a weird lineup. And she's the only one who's not white. So I'm just like, (laughs) what is this lineup? It is a weird lineup. But I mean, I think you you did predict correctly where like there would be like the the villains from previous movies who have already been introduced. I mean, it, it, it wasn't even my prediction because you had no. Val well, recruiting actively couple, U.S. Like, agent. Well, I did say it would be Yelena. U.S. agent Ghost and Yelena probably showing yep. up, but. And Ghost is cool because she was definitely underserved in her that movie, and she's a really interesting character. She is. I agree. I just feel like they could have maybe thrown in some more people of color. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it like I I was less excited after I saw the actual lineup. Yeah, because I mean, my understanding of it is that the concept of Thunderbolts is to match Suicide Squad, right? Or mm-hmm. to be the, the, you know, provoke the DC world yeah. by doing this, <laughs> doing this, you know, as mm-hmm. they do, doing a sort of mirror image. And, like, the concept being a bunch of military-style heroes that basically, basically run around and shoot people. And it'll probably be kind of funny and satiric. And I'm just saying they're they're more concerned with matching Suicide Squad energy than anything that had to do with the Thunderbolts comic. Because, again, no one cares about the Thunderbolts, really. Right. Yeah, but you don't have to care. But that's the thing with the MCU. You Like, half the characters that they've turned into lunchbox, you know, types have, have been characters no one typically cares about. And mm-hmm. I just thought, if you're not going to... But to... Like, I didn't even think of it, that, but that might have been what was not sitting right with me. But, like... The fact that, because when I saw Bucky, I was like, Bucky? Why is Bucky in the Thunderbolt? And then, but I didn't even put two and two together. Like, Bucky, U.S. Agent, Red Guardian, and and Yelena, to a certain extent, are all the same character. <laughs> like, they're the same type of hero. Mm-hmm. Or, you know. Like, yeah, they're right, going to be like set, the gun yeah. task force. Okay? Like, yeah, yeah and not going to be Moonstone. Yeah, then can just go in and, in and out and stuff. Like, I don't know. They could have brought in a couple of different other powered people who have different, I don't know. I mean, Taskmaster is probably the closest to an enhanced character other than Ghost, but even she's not, like... And it's, like, half Russian, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that I was happy to see, because I, I actually like those characters from Black Window a lot, so it was nice to revisit them. I, that, I yeah, like but it is, them. It's way more of a Black Widow sequel than I thought it, it was, was going to be. Yes. You know what I mean? I don't like that. <laughs> I I like Florence Pugh, and I obviously love David Arbor, but I just... I'm, I don't know. This team is not... The only person that I'm really like excited to see again is Ghost, and not that I'm not excited to see Florence Pugh again, but I don't know. I just feel like the lineup is just meh. Yeah, it's weird. 
it's definitely weird. I'm sure there'll be some other obscure And I might be the only person who's, like, excited to see Ghost, probably, too. That's probably the sad part, so <laughs> everyone else oh, is no. like, yay, everyone Ghost else. Ghost is really cool. We we can we can talk for hours about how Ghost is, like, a standout of what I consider an otherwise meh Ant-Man movie. I mean, she, <laughs> she, does, she totally deserves more story. We're going to take a break, and on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about She-Hulk. But before we do, the last thing I wanted to touch on from D23 is that the one, the other announcement that I've that piqued my interest is that the villain in Captain America 4 is going to be the leader and they're bringing back Tim Blake Nelson from the Incredible Hulk. So like after She-Hulk and Which now you can watch an HBO Ca- Max. Yeah. <laughs> Captain America. Like they really are like embracing that Edward Norton movie and I just think that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Now wait, I mean can can you folks remind me I don't remember that leader bit at all. Was it in like the side material or like? No, he was like the scenes? guy. Like I totally you, don't remember. You need to go log on to HBO Max I and know. watch Incredible Hulk HBO because Max. he's like the Censor guy of the Marvel universe. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. He's the guy Bruce goes to for help, and at the very he's because he's the one who who coins Tim Roth's character Emil Blonsky as an abomination because okay. Blonsky comes to him. He's like, if you do this, you'll be an abomination. And at some, I, I don't really remember the movie either, but I know at the end of the movie, he gets like knocked over and some of the Hulk juice like pours on his head and then his head starts like growing exponentially yeah. and oh. he like looks all like weird. And then and people are like, ooh, the leader is coming. And then like they forgot about him for 20 years. Yeah, so they're I, actually bringing him back. So I just don't want to watch that movie again because Edward Norton's <laughs> voice gets on my nerves. Okay. Well, well I'm sure they I have such petty reasons for why yeah. I don't like people. It's all good. I bet there's some somehow there's some way that they can superimpose Mark Ruffalo into the Incredible Hulk and then put that on Disney Plus. I just I think I don't know why um, I don't mind Edward Norton's voice in like uh, Fight Club, but for some reason when he's playing Bruce Banner, it gets on my nerves. <laughs> well, let's talk about Bruce Banner's cousin after the break. Okay. Guess what? Goalie Nutrition is sponsoring Hard Knock Life, and you can go to goalie.com to buy apple cider vinegar gummies. They're ashwagandha gummies, super fruit gummies, and super greens gummies. And you get 10% off plus free shipping if you use the code Hard Knock at goalie.com. This is honestly, I've been taking the goalie gummies now for, for a couple weeks, and I have to say, they're tasty and they're good for you. Have you guys been enjoying the goalie gummies? I really like them. They're yummy, but it's a nice to add to my like routine of already like I normally take just straight vitamin C. So it's nice to have like extra supplements. For a long time, people have have praised the benefits of apple cider vinegar. And, you know, as someone who's had to like drink straight apple cider vinegar sometimes when I'm not (laughs) feeling well or, you know, I have some joint pain and your mom is like, drink some apple cider vinegar. Mm. It's not the most appetizing home remedy let's just say right it tastes horrible like the apple cider part is like ooh, does it taste like apple cider it is like no it tastes like vinegar but acv is very good for you and the fact that goalie has been able to put the acv into these tasty little gummies made with pectin and fruit peels which make them vegan which is cool so if you're vegan you can still rock these gummies because everyone knows gummies are usually made out of like gelatin and nasty shit this these are made out of complete non-gmo gelatin-free gluten-free vegan ingredients and you can get the benefits all of the benefits of apple cider vinegar taking these tasty delicious convenient gummies so go to goalie.com and use the code hard knock that's h-a-r-d-n-o-c just like the podcast you're listening to get 10 percent off your purchase of goalie products and free shipping it's a much better delivery device for that apple cider vinegar yeah these, these goalie gummies are great you get it I and it's, it's in a delicious little candy and I, i've been enjoying the super fruits one i did feel kind of refreshed after taking a few of those yeah no but i'm loving them so far and they're definitely tasty if you just want tasty gummies at least just <laughs> eat them for their the, like the yummy yes yeah, yeah. So go to Goalie.com, use the code HARDNOCK, H-A-R-D-N-O-C, get 10% off your purchase, and free shipping at Goalie.com with the code HARDNOCK. Hard Knock Life is being sponsored by Athletic Greens. I want to talk to you about Athletic Greens. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Basically all the things. 
One of the best things about Athletic Greens is that it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. It also contains less than one gram of sugar and no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it still tastes good. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, that's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is partnering with Hard Knock Media to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash emerging. That's athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Episode four, I believe, of She-Hulk. Are we four episodes into that show already? Well, we got to talk about Madison and Wongers. That's yes. got to be the the next Disney yeah, Plus right. streaming show, right? Where they they just sit on a couch and watch Sopranos. That's all the show That's should be. My new like, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm shipping it. I'm shipping it. You, you got to come up with a portmanteau for, for like their names for or chaos, what? and then him wanting to trust, try to chill, and just like mm-hmm. you know, when you have to face a problem, you have to face. But then that let's be chill. Like they're so like I don't know. I love it. it it's it's great. The only thing that I couldn't get over. Honestly, and this might be a case of all white people look the same, is that she looks so much like Elizabeth Olsen to me. <laughs> I mean, again, maybe maybe it was the resolution on my screen. I, I just couldn't get over the fact that like, like Elizabeth Olsen. But... <laughs> is this Wong and like Wanda? So, oh man, Wanders. you just made it weird. And, and no, it's not. It's, unless they're all scrolls, but. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm glad you used the word ship, because when I was thinking about this Wong and Madison subplot, you know, like, in in another kind of show, like, Madison just hooks up with the guy instantly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If he's, like, say, a studly white music- magician. Musician? Studly white magician. <laughs> or musician. Sor- 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 sorcerer. <laughs> They're like in some ver- there's some version of the show where Madison, who just seems like sort of like a fun loving ditzy sort of type, like they hook up instantly, but they don't. I mean, not I'm not saying that's because he's a Chinese guy, but that's something that didn't happen, and they become very platonic. How do you very know quickly. it didn't happen? That's something that didn't obviously happen. So that's why I'm saying I'm glad, sort of. That I <laughs> ship think more them. will be developed revealed in the them. future. I ship them. And I am on the Wongason. Wongason? I, I, I gotta know. work on that. We gotta work on it. But <laughs> it's I two Y's, it. two N's and a Y, but it's not where you. It's two two N's and a Wong, but it's not where you think. It is. <laughs> I don't know. I I ship it. I'm down. I like them. I didn't think that I would like. Like you know, someone had told me this was gonna happen. I was like, I don't know about this, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I mean, I kind of knew it was gonna happen because when Laura interviewed. All of the creators of She-Hulk a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. like all they talked about was Madison, and I was like, "Who the hmm. hell is Madison, and why you keep talking about it?" Yeah, Madison. But now great. that the episode, it's like, oh, I get why. Yeah. they keep talking about Madison. Yeah, I I loved the chaos, and I in general, um, She-Hulk is picking up for me again. The only thing, like, I really my overall criticism is that the her CGI on She-Hulk is what kind of holds the whole show back. But mm-hmm. I like the last two episodes a lot. They were a lot of fun. And I think that it's, it feels more like the sensational She-Hulk and Dan Slot run and all that stuff of, like, it feels more like that. So, it's, like, fun. It's exciting. Donnie Blaze was an idiot, but I loved that, too. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And I really like Josh Shagira on uh, episode, uh, was that the last episode? Yeah, episode the, right. I couldn't remember his name. I just said he was the bad guy from Arrow. Yeah, because I, I liked remember. him on Arrow, and I thought he was super hot. So, he's great. Again. And he's completely playing a different character. Oh, I know. Like, so different. Arrow, he's, like, so menacing in here. He's kind of like a puppy dog. I know. It's so... I don't know. I like Like, literally, because his name is Pug. <laughs> he's literally a puppy dog. <laughs> it's great. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited for Charlie Cox next week. Oh, so let's talk about... Is it... I don't know if that's next week's episode. Because it was, like, the... the the, they release a trailer mm-hmm. that said, like, the second half of She-Hulk, and it shows a lot more Daredevil scenes than, than they'd given us before, because there's actually a Matt mm-hmm. Murdock scene where he's talking to mm-hmm. Jen and not She-Hulk. So, and it's clearly showing he's in the yellow costume, which is really cool. Well, and he says, like, She-Hulk is for when the lawyering doesn't work. Like, right. I was like, ooh. <laughs> 
clearly she hulk and daredevil are gonna hook up too that, oh, that yeah. seems to be what they're telegraphing oh, yeah, because they're the, like the two hooking up the superheroes in the marvel universe like yeah there's the no one stars. that they don't hook up with in, the, in they're the, the biggest the universe. yeah totally <laughs> wolverine once called daredevil a big himbo <laughs> there stands out of jealousy or envy as it were so yeah not sure it's next week's but it's definitely coming there's four more episodes left and, mm. and there's going to be some, some daredevil action there are two more yeah, episodes left? I think there's four. Cause it's I thought it was hours. eight. Is oh, it six? They got is it just like six? They got Maybe it's six. No, you're right. Order? Well, Maybe it is six. Maybe it's also shorter. Half, half no, I think, I think Brittany's right. I just assumed four more because they said, we're at the halfway point, and it's been four episodes. <laughs> so no, like, so then it has might... to be four more than if it's the halfway point. You would think, but I, who knows? Who I knows? I think it is right, but let's not get hung up on the elementary math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this uh, I kind of liked this episode but also like and i like seeing a lot of wong and we just talked about how much we enjoyed madison i did I'm kind of bother because i think in a bunch of these disney shows they get like a few episodes in, and then they just like want to introduce a whole bunch of side characters and new characters and stuff yeah. there is something like they're kind of straying from the formula of like stay with the lead and stay with mm-hmm. the title characters so we become involved in their story but they're it's kind of like the Red Daggers in Ms. Marvel, right? Like, all of a sudden, yes. we're getting to the Red Daggers. Show and you feel going like great. That should be season two, at least. <laughs> and then there's all this new shit, all these new characters that you got to process. And there's, for some reason, I know, that that's feeling to me like squandered potential. Like, a, just mm-hmm. just like you could, like, almost something, something weird in the Bible of, like, how they write these Marvel series. Like, we have to have X number of, like, guest stars by this point. I mean, it happens in this case that Madison's a particularly funny one, and we do like spending time with Wong. Yeah, I also think they—they're not. I feel like they're—they're they're not really setting up Titania. Like, I don't like she. They bring her up again mm-hmm. in this episode, but it's like that first episode where she just shows up for five seconds and Jen punches her. I didn't feel like was that big mm-hmm. a deal for her to be like. It seems like she's supposed to be the big bad, I guess, because Titania is an iconic She-Hulk villain. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It just like. And you cast Jamila Jamil, and so far she's been in, like, 30 seconds of screen time. Maybe, like, she's in all of the last couple episodes. But I don't know. I just feel like the She-Hulk Titania stuff seems a little underbaked. And I don't know what they're yeah trying to do with that. I mean, I want to circle back to the Madison Wong thing, Donna, because I, I feel like what you're saying is really interesting. So to you, it was a very chaste relationship. Yeah, maybe I'm projecting a bunch of things. I know I'm projecting a bunch of things. <laughs> I and maybe the chase it. part is just what to yeah. what they it. show in the first. I just like, I am someone who ships things that are like when one person is very chaotic and kind of a mess and all over the place. And then the other person's more stoic and like calm and like, that's my cup of tea. I'm just, I, so I may be the only person who's shipping it, but I'm shipping it hardcore. Oh, no, I think well, there's yeah, no, quite a few. Everyone in the right mind should be shipping it. That's what I'm saying. I, I, so to your point, like the, because they know about shipping culture, they probably know that they should not just start off with a bang, but like, let people like, you know, enjoy uh, the art mean, towards up. whatever kind of thing. Yes. That's, that makes sense. I mean, and the fact that they even paired, like, I think what you were getting at earlier is the fact that they, they even paired Madison with Wong. Right. Is a step in the right direction mm-hmm. because in classically in any kind of superhero media, like even the way the MCU has handled Wong since his introduction to in Doctor Strange, Wong, who was traditionally a very racist sidekick character yeah. in, the, in the past, they've actually made Wong into like a well-rounded, three-dimensional superhero character in the MCU, which is something that I never predicted would happen. Yeah, he's one of the more interesting elaborations on the original comic mm-hmm. concept. Someone and... made an infograph on social media showing, like, this is this is really Wong's cinematic universe because, like, the last seven movies, he's been the yeah. Nick Fury, in a sense, kind of, like, holding it all together, so. Yep. Yeah. And we can't... Everyone loves Sorry. Him. We can't forget that he would have, you know, solved that whole Infinity Gauntlet problem in the first movie if fucking Doctor Strange had just learned to cut off the hand with the portal trick. But that's another story. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So yeah, he's he's around all all over, and he's like like in like in some like old school like version of the Asian dude in the show. Like no one no one ships them. Like they're they're they've they've, they've just got to be friends. She know? would have been re- or she you would have been repulsed saying? by him, yeah. not like 
affection, even if there's no like sexual tension necessarily, there's definitely an affection for him when mm-hmm. she sees him, right? I mean, she's also like chronically drunk, so there's some <laughs> yeah, there's some like ickiness if they do hook up because like if they hook up, like is Wong kind of like yeah in the right there yeah, too, and, right? And I'm not saying <laughs> like, again, we want them to hook up because like. She's also 90% drunk, too. Right. I'm not saying this is some big win if, like, the Asian guy gets to hook up with the drunk white girl. That's not, like, the victory endgame I'm talking about. I'm just talking about it. The, the setup creates interesting potentials to yeah. explore the traditionally, you know, desexified Asian dude. Because because the her personality is so extreme. You know, she's like a, like, floozy partying white girl that we see many times. Mm-hmm. But there's also but there's also the part of She Hulk that is explicitly talking about dating and relationships and stuff like that. And in this agree. episode in particular, yeah, in particular. So that's why I'm you know ho- hoping something comes of that on on both sides. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, because even if you think about it, the the one super Asian superhero movie we did get, Shang Chi, like talk about a chase relationship. He and Aquafina's were not that was not a romantic relationship. Yeah, she was not his love interest. They were just friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is there's nothing wrong with being just friends, but I think to your point, even if you did cast the hot Asian guy, he seems to only be in a chase relationship too, you know. The MCU does kind of make its POC characters desexualize. Yeah. I mean, not like there's so much sex happening generally. I don't but... know if it's because they're afraid of the stereotype of people of color are overly sexual and not like, you know, and the like, whole like, white people are pure and they're not <laughs> overly sexual. There's even some white girl who tweeted about, like, why is she whole twerking? Like, does twerking even the thing that men <laughs> like? And it's just like, you know, a lot of us who like to work, we just do it because it's fun, not because we're trying to get someone's <laughs> attention or like whatever. But I think that's the whole like thing is that like, you know, people of color, especially women of color or men of color, whatever, they're more like sexual and they're trying to like not get hit that stereotype. But at the same time, it's like people are human beings and if people feel sexual attraction, that's that's what they are. Like not every single person of color needs to be coded as asexual so you can avoid some weird stereotype thing of over sexualizing people but i don't know if that's what it mm. is but and, but i think it's also the opposite for like asian character asian male characters in, in <laughs> and yeah, specifically we're media. talking about a stereotype that's mainly around black people black men and and women all oh, women <laughs> i mean like if we can be could we really be harsh about how stereotypes work the over sexualization one really generally applies to black men and basically all women and the non-sexualization one generally applies to asian american dudes I mean, because even in Eternals, even in Eternals, way. the Angelina Jolie, Athena, and Gilgamesh, like yeah, that was I a fascinating them, one. Yeah, but then they also were not a romantic couple. Like he cared for her, and and he they weren't but, romantic. I mean, they were, they they don't show them being in a romance the way that they show. That was very sweet. Gemma and, Chan and Richard Madsen. Yeah. I, I, I forget the characters' names. Still, but still, Cersei that was unusual, and, and that that itself was pushing a little boundary. And full notes also. See, I read them as Asian romantic. Mm-hmm. Yes. Brittany, you I always have your eyes open to look for these things. I, That's yeah, the yeah, difference. Yeah. I like, <laughs> like romance. Like, even if people are just like eating popcorn, you're like considering whether to ship them or not. And that's, <laughs> okay. a, and that's a good, Maybe and that's a a good different perspective. Yeah. It's good that you see potential in everyone. That's also like, <laughs> There's definitely I'm a rabbit like hole romance. you can go down when you try to look at like the, the policies of sexuality in something like the MCU. Because like typically in these superhero IP, like the argument is also the other way. Like, People don't like any kind of romance or sexuality in a superhero. Yeah, unless there just... hardly is any. So... Right, and and yeah, I mean, so and also like even the amount of sexuality world. in the MCU writ large is like what we're, we're talking about. Like, it's not like there's full on like they made the big deal of the Icarus Cersei love scene in Eternals, mm-hmm. right? Like first time there's a love scene so in an tame. MCU movie, and it was like yeah, exactly. Even Captain America's like virginity being kind of joked about, like it, it is like. The MCU is kind of chased as is, right? So yeah, but there's some, um, there are a few powerful romances like like Steve Rogers, and remind me your name, Peggy <laughs> and Peggy, Peggy. Sorry. and Peggy, and uh, Peggy. very classically centralized white pretty people romance. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's also the argument, right? Because there's definitely like there's Steve and Peggy, there's Tony and Pepper, there's Hawkeye and his whole family, mm-hmm. like. Everyone else has relationships and right. has children and has 
a romantic life outside of like superhero life. And all that is fine. That's just old. There was T'Challa and Nakia, but an now excellent it's... love story. But now like, that's not you know like... love suggestive love. Yeah, story. right. That's kind that of that made it. you know that made part of that movie. I don't know. Maybe so, Neymar because so cool. he's sexy. So maybe Neymar's gonna get a love interest. <laughs> Did you guys see, like, I forget which dumbass comic book artist, but, like, he was trying to clown oh, yeah. the uh, actor playing Namor, and he was like, look at my back, and, like, I'm get like, over yourself, dude. Uh, anyway. I'm sorry. I like the, like, I don't know, Namor's body type. I don't know how to describe it, but it, it works for me. That's why I think Benedict Wong is also really cute. Sorry. That's why yeah, I ship dude. him in Madison. Yeah, he's got that thing. <laughs> he's kind of, yeah, because... Remember, like, and then his Wong voice in comics too. was kind of like mm. was small. It's even a physical presence thing. Yeah, you know, Benedict Wong is kind of like gruff, and like he's there's something cute about. Yeah, him. I... Wong is not a sidekick in the MCU, no, right? Like even in the first Strange movie, like Wong is an equal, and mm. clearly in the last few movies, yeah. he is a superior to yes. yeah. Stephen Strange. But at the same time, he lays in the cut because we're focused on Doctor Strange. You know, but I still stand with my point. Going. I still yeah. need to finish Morbius, but I still stand with my point that Benedict Cumberbatch should have been Morbius. Yeah, that I mean, he already looks helped. like Morbius without the makeup. So yeah, I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad for your optimism that wouldn't have helped. <laughs> it's Morbin time. Morbius. My little brother thought that was a real thing, so he finished <laughs> he was watching. Waiting the, for the line. Yeah, so he had finished watching the movie. I couldn't finish it because I had to get ready. And he was like, "Yeah, the movie's great, but he never said Morbin time. Like serious, like dead serious. He's like, but he never said Morbin time, so right. I don't get it. And I was like, you're not on Twitter. This is your problem. Why you need yeah, to be yeah, on yeah. Twitter? Jared Leto's he's he's good at that because I I think in the Snyder cut he never actually says we live in a society. It was just in the trailers. And then in the in the actual movie, he never he doesn't say we live in a society. I don't think. But anyway, I, we live in a society where we're t- still talking about this. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Oh, and I get well. I know. Just to round off that point again, Doctor Strange and this whole thing with Christine gives that romantic yeah, right, flair that's right. to the last Doctor Strange movie. Though Doctor Strange is just a freaking you in every renegade universe. like fuck up, almost sorcerer supreme. <laughs> <laughs> but we centralize his story and that's the same yeah. so just something about this Wong being somewhat centered in this series run by an Asian American woman with the potential for some kind of tangible emotional relationship but again with the caveat it's with this interesting chaotic funny <laughs> hot mess girl could be yeah. great or it could or they could go the soft way and just never speak of it again which oh. would be the 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 shame I don't need right. that. Introduce it, and it just be a gag I that basically sits on the couch next to Oiler. Yes, we we basically you started you started something, you got to finish it. Yeah, like this podcast, we started it, and now we have to finish it. <laughs> Brittany, what's nerd popping? Two things, because I promised a listener that I would talk about this movie that I saw like two weeks ago, uh, The Invitation. It was really great. I loved it. My only downside was it was not sexy enough. You're going to have vampires, I'm sorry, and the wedding, and you just, it was, like, almost there, too. It was, like, there's a couple moments where I'm like, ooh, this should have happened, and this should have happened. And it could have been a little bit more bloody and sucking people's blood, and but it was great. It was so fun. I heard that they might release a version where there is more sexy and gory, so I want that version. It was fun. Um, highly recommend watching it if you, like vampire sexy vampires sexy vampires because the dude playing the vampire is very sexy his name is i think thomas duarte yeah it was great and then my other thing is i watched the making of kenobi a jedi's return it was wonderful i loved the whole process and deborah chow talking about why she made the certain like character choices she made she's so like her and star wars oh <laughs> oh i was so happy it was so great and then just seeing like everyone talk about who came who returned like you know hayden and you and just talking about coming back and how like it wasn't even they had um what's his name in it Qui-Gon um talking about him coming back and I don't know it was great and I loved seeing Hayden just like embrace that like I am like Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader and that even when Darth Vader quote-unquote Anakin is evil he's still the chosen one like when he said that I was like oh (laughs) it was great one thing I love about Disney plus is that they do have these behind this and you know like I always complain about the death of physical media and Blu-rays not having as many special features as they used to. And one of the cool things, I mean, yes, it's a streaming service, but it's cool that they do mm-hmm. kind of embrace the idea of having all these like behind the scenes documentaries 
for all the properties that they do because there's also the 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 Avengers ones that they do. There's one they just released for Thor, but then I of course there's this one for Kenobi. Yeah, I know, I know. But they do one for every Marvel thing that comes out, yeah. and then when the show's over or the movie's over, they release the I think it's called Avengers Assembled. Mm-hmm. And then and now they're doing that for the Star Wars stuff because well they have they, been because they did that for for Mandalorian mm-hmm. it was called like Disney Gallery or something yes. before but now they just decided well we'll just put it all in one thing for each successive show so yeah that's I haven't watched it yet but I'm it's definitely in my queue I would definitely watch it because they also have footage of Alec Guinness and. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really, it was really nice, and I liked it. I did. The only thing is, I wish they had Vivian talk a little bit more. Who is, you know, Princess Leia? That was my only like downside where she wasn't in it enough. But it was really fun. I liked it, and they really need to give Hayden his own like Darth Vader series. I mean, then maybe. I'm you, just, you never I'm know. just on board. I'm gunning for it. I have been on the Hayden train since I was twelve, and it is. I'm never <laughs> getting off of it, and I'm gonna support him forever. <laughs> So he's not this hot. Dominic, what's nerd popping? A bunch of things. But first, I just got to say, how is Edward Norton's voice annoying and Hayden Christensen's voice not annoying? <laughs> because I'm sorry. I'm on a different train from you guys. You know that. <laughs> but in my school, it, Hayden Christensen is the guy you don't want to talk. That emo whiny boy is very like, <sighs> yes, <sighs> it does it for me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I still so listen good. to emo music. Like, I don't know. I'm literally seeing Pierce the Veil next month, and I got them um, tattooed on my arm, and they released a new song, and I've been talking about it forever. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm emo forever, so. I'm so, yeah, but I think you're projecting the emo thing on it. Well, no. I won't, I won't tell you what you're doing. <laughs> Hayden I'm, Christensen is emo. Okay. In Star that's, Wars. That's, that's, I'm so glad it's a large country where you can have diverse opinions about <laughs> things. Because I like Edward Norton's voice, and Hayden Christensen's voice makes me want to scream. I'll just say that. <laughs> There, but okay, <laughs> yeah, because you're just not attracted to emo boys. It's okay, not everyone is. Yeah, it's, it, it's okay. D23, like a lot of things, were exciting. The the announcement of Black Panther Captain America game, very exciting. But I think it's so far in the future, and Untitled will get more into that at the appropriate time. I really glad to hear more about the Marvels. Uh, I still think that's going to be the most exciting cosmic quantum leap of the of next year okay the next disney plus series that's coming out is andor is it not i mean after she yeah is done. on the 21st yeah. three episodes on the 21st yeah i'm getting pretty excited about that and again it's mainly because i think tony gilroy is a good writer for this sort of thing and I, you know we were talking about rogue one the other week and you know watch that one again and it still has uh something that's Base, I, I think all the other non-original trilogy movies don't. <laughs> um, I, I mean, all the that. footage that they've released from Andor, and I think they, they also released that extended scene between Stellan Skarsgård and Diego Luna. I, yeah, I, I think one, one thing that's really interesting about Andor that separates it from the other Disney Plus shows is that it's the first one that's like almost all location and not using the volume as much as the other shows yeah, do. Yeah, important too. And you can see it in the footage, yeah. right? You can tell that they're out in the world, the tactileness of everything. So yeah, and that's sort of one of the distinctive features of the Bourne movies. Not like the Bourne movies are the best thing ever, but they very much in the old school of like we're going to that location, we're going to Italy, we're going to you know, and you like it just feels more like you know, you're uh, in these different worlds. Yeah. Anyway, so excited about that. And yourself, Keith. Yeah, so the a couple of more things from D twenty three we didn't get to, get to talk about that I that I'm very excited for. One is the Percy Jackson trailer they dropped. I didn't watch that. Yeah, you go. Did are you a fan of the books? I didn't read the books, but I liked the movies with Logan Lerman and the second one mm. featured Fallout Boy's music, so it's just <laughs> so it's just it's, in your it's DNA. in my wheelhouse. Well, a lot of the Percy Jackson book fans were not fans of the movies, so I they've know been that. waiting for a more faithful adaptation. Rick Reardon is actually involved with the series. So, and it's, it's more of a teaser than a trailer. So it's really, really exciting. The, the dialogue is lifted straight from the first book, the lightning thief, the, the kid playing Percy is the kid from the Adam project with Ryan Reynolds. That was cool. The other cool thing from D 23 American born Chinese had, there was some footage released of some behind the scenes Hmm. stuff with Michelle Yeoh. That's That's based on the Jean Lun Yang book. But there was some uh, cool behind-the-scenes footage. Michelle Yeoh's in it. She plays Guan Yin. Daniel Wu from Into the Badlands is the Monkey King. So, like, really cool. The Destin oh, Cretton from 
from Shang Chi's is he's not the showrunner, but he's the director. I think of I don't know of all the episodes, but I, I think the first episode at least. Anyway, the other cool thing out of D twenty three, which is not connected, but they announced in D five, like I love the Indiana Jones movies. I'm not sure why we need a fifth one <laughs> after the fourth one was such trash, but we're getting a fifth one. They showed footage. They didn't show it to the to the world, but they I guess showed footage on stage. But same day, they announced during the Marvel panel, Ki Hui Kwan is going to be in Loki season two, and now famously Ki Hui Kwan was short round in Temple of Doom, and so backstage he was backstage at the same time Harrison Ford was. They saw each other, gave each other a big embrace, and that photo went viral on social media. Mm. And it ain't gonna lie, it brought a tear to my eye, but it also made me think, well, shit, instead of Indiana Jones 5, why don't we get an Indiana Jones 6 with Indian short round <laughs> reuniting as, like, you know, adult and, I guess, geriatric men. So, <laughs> that was, that was like, the, the, the bright You're asking spot. why we don't do that? Yeah, you're Everybody right. Well, hell, question. if Tom Cruise can hang off the side of an airplane, you can put Harrison Ford and Kiku Kwan in the movie together. But anyway... That that photo was what's nerd popping for me this yeah. week. So, Brittany Monet, how can people find you on the interwebs? You can find me at hi Brittany Monet I'm on both Twitter and Instagram. And then we are officially turning the Naomi podcast feed into the Lituation Room, which we have the Lituation.com because someone else took the, um, but they don't even use it. But we mm. bought the we bought the uh, dom- domain name. Of the situation room and at I think it's at lit crew underscore pod is the Twitter handle for the new. But if you already follow Naomi podcast, you automatically if you, follow. Yes, this, if right? you're already following the Naomi podcast, then you are already now following it. We just kind of tweeted, we all tweeted and announced it, so it's gonna be fun. We're gonna try to do like episodes once a month, and we recorded actually earlier today talking about D twenty three and all of that. And of course, I once again was championing uh, Werewolf by Night because that's like my favorite thing that came out of D twenty three besides like Hocus Pocus and the Little Mermaid. So <laughs> yeah, Dominic, how can people find you on the web? Oh, I'm Dominic Ma on Instagram or Twitter. It's D O double M A H Dom Ma. You can find me on Twitter at the real child, the underscore real underscore child, and on Instagram at real Keith Chow. Follow the Nerds of Color at the Nerds of Color, and go to hardknockmedia.com to find this podcast and all of the podcasts in the Hard Knock family. Give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts if you can, because that helps people find the podcast. Support us on Patreon.com/slash the Nerds of Color. Buy merch at T Public. And subscribe to our videos at youtube.com slash the nerds of color. Thank you for listening. And until next time. I know a girl named Madison and she likes to do heroin. <laughs> is that something that we should is know? That, is that true? or is that it's, it's, a, it's a song by this band called Grayscale. And ever since I watched the episode of She-Hulk, I have that song stuck in my head. So I've been singing all day. I know a girl nice. named Madison and she used to do heroin. Not like she's a super heroine, but just <laughs> but not heroin. where you think. It's a great song. It's called uh, "Pain Killer Weather" by Grayscale. When we come, when we come back to it another like week or so. But I also think Wongers is a little fancy white. But I'm trying to have a good sense of humor about it. <laughs>